Good afternoon, Average Engineers. Today I'm going to talk about Unity Catalog. It's a Databricks feature, and Databricks is taking over the world. I'm sure you know that already, and Unity Catalog is their jam. And you pretty much have to use Unity Catalog if you're going to Databricks. Recently announced they're basically depreciating the standard account, and in favor of Unity Catalog is just that's where everything's going, that's where all the features are at. Basically, it's one of these tools you're going to have to know in the future, probably because Databricks adoption is large and going up and Unity Catalog is part of that. What is Unity Catalog? Databricks Unity Catalog offers a unified governance layer of data and AI within the Databricks data intelligence platform. That's obviously a quote from Databricks, marketing stuff, whatever. But it is really what it comes down to is Unity Catalog is governance. Why is that? Because it basically tracks everything and stores everything. It's all a unified platform and that happens via Unity Catalog. Think about it, it's a catalog of many different things and it's very kind of heavily slanted towards governance because of permissions and other things like that. Just to expand on what is Unity Catalog, if you're still kind of like, oh, I'm not totally sure, basically it's a bunch of features and governance. So it's the governance of data and objects, aka yes, like a table, but also a user, a group, pretty much a machine learning model, anything can be an object in Unity Catalog and you can now govern the interactions between those objects and how people interact with those objects via Unity Catalog. Of course, there's like a lot of machine learning stuff now in Unity Catalog, things like ML flow, model endpoints, feature stores, etc. That's all part of Unity Catalog. And that's basically, you know, Databricks is known for a machine learning platform. Unity Catalog has built into these, all these tools for machine learning, basically managing models, deploying models, using models, things like that. Of course, there's a lot of collaboration, delta sharing, things like that in Unity Catalog. And then, of course, monitoring and observability of Unity Catalog. Obviously, they're tracking and monitoring everything. Then you can monitor and observe those things that are in Unity Catalog. Today, I'm going to talk about Unity Catalog more in the concepts of governance and permissions. Um, we'll kind of like start Unity Catalog there. I'll probably get to the other stuff later. So governance is kind of like who can do or access what. Basically, if I'm an analyst or I'm an engineer, what can I do inside the Databricks platform? What can I see? What can I interact with? What can I do to a table? What can't I do to the table? Obviously, we talked about the collaboration piece, delta sharing, discovery, things like that. If you're on large teams with tons of stuff, Unity Catalog becomes more important. And just the oversight piece, right? You're mining, logging, and observing everything that's going on. And then the machine learning, we kind of talked about that ML life cycle. This is a background for Unity Catalog of why if we just talk about Databricks at a high level, data mix, Databricks made Spark approachable. It basically did what EMR and AWS didn't do. It made Spark easy and approachable, it made collaboration and development easy for non-engineers, think notebooks, and the simplicity of infrastructure for and development. That's all what Databricks did. And they're basically, basically Unity Catalog is a next progression for Databricks as they continue to push their platform and offering forward. It's no surprise that Unity Catalog, which is an amalgamation of all Databricks has to offer into a single spot, is now the new standard. Now, if you're wondering how do I migrate to Unity Catalog, it can be a big job if you're on Databricks, if you're not. But basically, what I would argue, because I've done the migration before to Databricks Unity Catalog, is that setting up permissions and controls for Unity Catalog for the objects that you're going to be using is probably the hardest part. And it sounds easy, but it's not. It's the hardest because it requires a lot of high-level design and discussions before you even dive into migrating to code to anything. It's really how are we approaching and controlling this environment. I think it'll make it more clear once we talk about this a little bit more, but what are the high-level components of Unity Catalog? You have workspaces, catalogs, schemas, objects like tables, groups, users, service accounts, and then you can do permission stuff like grant who can do what. Uh, here's a high level view of what a Unity Catalog setup could look like and this is why a lot of the design and prep goes into the upfront, upfront work of Unity Catalog, not necessarily the code. It's really thinking about, oh, I need a production catalog. Oh, I need a development catalog to keep those things separate because we need production and development. We don't want them to cross over. Oh, we have these different schemas inside here and those different schemas some of them are available in this catalog some of them aren't and they have tables underneath there of course we have these workspaces we talked about oh who's in what workspace what are the permissions what permissions do those workspaces have to those catalogs 
who are my different groups of people? I've set up these different groups. Maybe I have a group for engineering, for analytics, for data science, and who's inside those groups? And how do those groups interact with those workspaces and specifically those catalogs and those objects and schemas inside, right? It's like, how do you want to control all that? Who can do what? Maybe I have analysts who don't have delete access. So they only have view to prod, right? Or you have engineers who can actually modify tables in prod, et cetera. These are the high level things that you have to think about. They sound easy. But to actually implement them, you need to sit down and think through what does my organization look like? What is my setup going to look like in Unity Catalog? How am I going to set up workspaces? How am I going to set up catalogs and groups of users underneath it? How are they all going to interact with each other? I'll just give you a quick overview of some of the different pieces. What's a workspace? A workspace is an environment for accessing all of your Databricks access assets. This is like what you would log into, what you can see visually in front of you, what you have access to, right? An analyst probably or your general users probably have a different workspace and maybe your developers and engineers, right? Because those are totally different, two different sets of people with totally diff different sets of things they can view and use. They probably are different workspaces. Catalogs are like a foundational piece to kind of contain schemas, which schemas contain the tables that you can work on. So obviously you might have a production catalog that's pointing to an S3 bucket over here. Then you might have a development catalog over here playing to another develop to another S3 bucket. So you have like separation of concerns and those catalogs really, you know, they contain the actual object schemas and tables, delta tables that you'll be using. They're extremely important. And you can limit certain catalog access, access to specific workspaces. So again, you really have to think about how you want all these things to work together. I mentioned schemas before. Schemas are basically holding spots for tables. Uh, you can think of them as a database, right? They're groupings of tables and views and other things like volumes and functions and models. If you're a big organization, you might, you know, have a schema for data scientists and R&D to play around with. You might have a production schema. You might have a development schema, right? It just depends on your use case. You probably just don't want to jam everything in one spot. Objects are like anything, but most people can think about them like tables, right, in a normal database. Of course, you have groups, which are groups of users and other accounts. Uh, you have users. That's the lowest common denominator. I set up a email for this user right for this person now also there's also service accounts you got to think about those are the things that are probably running your automated jobs and things like that definitely got to think about how you want to set up service accounts because you don't want necessarily your production jobs to be running under some engineer who gets run over by bus and of course if you use the unit catalog you'll be very come very familiar with permissions aka grant statements the sql grant statements and that's kind of like the most granular level of controlling permissions you can say. You can do it through the UI too, but you can also do SQL state and say like, you know, grant privilege type. So grant select on this table to maybe analyst group or maybe grant use catalog on this catalog production to engineering team, right? That type of thing. The bad part is we haven't really like dug into everything else of unit catalog. But again, here's just a high level view. We've only talked about the super high level things you're migrating to you in a catalog, you'd have to stop and think about your business, think about the groups, think about your data, and you'd kind of have to shuffle that stuff around, figure out what kind of catalogs and workspaces and groups you need, different schemas where all the tables go and who can actually do what to which. Databricks doesn't actually give a lot of in their best practices, they're kind of really vague in general. You'd think they'd have like, this is how you should set up Unicago, but they don't just because it's so different between companies. You can't really find much. The most stuff you can find kind of They'll talk about having different catalogs for production and development. That's kind of pretty standard. Talk about different schemas, you know, breaking your table up into different schemas logically. They don't give you too much information on, say, workspaces, because that's really user dependent. You know, it depends if you got a, like an analyst group here and an engineering group. It's kind of up to you how you handle those workspaces. Here's some things I learned, and I'm just going to run through them that I learned doing a migration. Catalogs are a great way to set up separation between environments like Dev and Prod. You can tie different physical storage locations to different catalogs. So dev and prod, different buckets, total separation. Workspaces I really think about, they're kind of like a catalog because they're really like a view of what groups of people can see and have access to at a high level. So it means you don't have to get so granular with permissions. You can just say, oh, I have a general workspace that I give all my users and analysts and things like that, that, you know, they can only see this stuff. And it just makes it easier at a high level to kind of separate people and what they can see and do. The next best thing is just to think about groups. Generally, I have engineering, analysts, analytics, data science. Those are probably groups of people that do different things. Put your users in those groups and then think about how can I assign permission at the group level? What do engineers need to do that analysts don't, for example? 
Unity catalog can get complicated quickly. There's a lot of features, but I would say before you just dive into the features and, oh, I want to use it, you should really think about and spend time about how do I want to set up time, set up, how do I want to set up permissions and how do I want to set up my environment before times? I think you should really map and draw out a high level structure of this is what I think my catalogs and workspaces and groups like this should look like. This is the data they have access to. Before you go down the road of implementation in your catalog, you should definitely do that work up front because I guarantee that'll have a massive impact. Hopefully later we can dig in more to Unity Catalog actually see these pieces in action.